I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the foundation. That's extremely interesting. So the text is one thing, but then we have multiple other options. And one of the things that's really interesting is the capability to decentralize the revenue that's being generated currently by uh, single entities or just a few entities that capture billions of dollars of market. And now instead of that, with the side chains, we have the capability to redistribute that or change the way the service is rendered to put that now on the back of the validators. And now validators can provide this service and earn money while the customers can connect to those validators through the sidechain. So it's really interesting. There are several applications of that. Decentralized data providers, situation like Infra, Block Cipher and all that. Decentralized cloud computing, situations yeah. like Amazon and all that. So it is extremely promising. Again, this is a whole ecosystem that we're really talking about. It's not limited to only DV who will remain on its corner and then um, have a large toolbox. We're really talking about being able to create multiple side chains that each host their own service, right? Like a decentralized application, if you will. Yeah. And, and so it is a completely new approach to blockchain services. When we talk about this, we're at Divi 3.0, right? And so somewhere in between Divi 3.0, we'll be at 3.5 and then we'll be, and I'm using rough numbers. I don't have an exact number. And then we'll be at four and four is where we plan. I'm expecting, and you guys can concur, or maybe add to it. If four is kind of where the side chains uh, come into play. Um, the only so. thing that I was going to add besides that little bit of knowledge was the fact that everything that we're talking about sounds super complicated. And it is super complicated. And it, really, there is nothing in real trustless crypto that isn't uh, a, a learning journey. And it is also a user experience journey. And one of the philosophies is obviously learning and sharing from my point of view, uh, but making a user experience, but not just the user experience, but from a developer experience, because we want, we want, as a community, we should want. It's not just the voice wants. It's this technology cries out for people to build on it. And one of the features and functions in that will be um, templatization. It will be utility made easy, as easy as, as a complicated crypto can be made uh, for uh, a, a very, very uh, a hard technology. The user experience should be, of course, uh, from that perspective, if you're using wallets, should be progressively made easier and easier, just like what happened uh, early on with Masternode. So crypto made easy doesn't go away. Crypto utility just comes into play. And then people can dream because you just said Infura type data sharing uh, where light wallets have to use these services. All light wallets have to use services. Infura is just one. MetaMask is another. MetaMask doesn't have its own data. It has to get that from an API somewhere. That data is shared across all sorts of um, apps and That's developers right. and communities. Uh, big exchanges, uh, uh, whether it's you know name brand uh, apps or, or or homegrown apps, they need a source of that data, and unless those people run their own nodes, right, and a node for every chain they support, that would be the other thing. They have That's to right. get an open API that usually has a fee attached to it, and this the side chain example of of an example itself of a uh, decentralized uh, participatory involvement from the community supporting these kinds of efforts it is honoring satoshi because if you do the work and you're participating you can have an opportunity to earn and so that's that's the one thing that i would add and probably end my thought on right there is that it's more opportunities for for everyone wanting to participate. Yeah, you just uh, run a node and you're participating in the sidechain. That's the cool part. And in this particular case, you're talking about this inferior competitor. You know, you run a node of two chains, the sidechain and whatever chain you want to connect to, and people need that information and pay you. The fees are how you're getting paid to provide this service. That part of it is much simpler. It I is think. totally simple, yeah.
That's yeah. right. Yeah, it's really opening the market, right? You basically have a market that is currently captive by a few major actors because to be able to provide this service, you need a major infrastructure. You need to be able to run dozens of nodes to have the backup, to be able to sustain the amount of requests that you get per second, per hour. And now with decentralizing this whole infrastructure, you don't need to have one person or one company managing this major infrastructure. Now you have hundreds or thousands of of people that are running their nodes and that are providing the service and sharing yeah. sharing those fees and you sharing can imagine in the revenue, that yeah. the cost of that is also going way down because now you don't have again a few actors which have this market captive and can put major margins now you actually have a very open market where the validators are com they're competing for the fees of the side chains and so, yeah, the, the situation is completely different from what it is now. And it is, again, reproducible in other kind of scenario, not only for data providing, because once again, data providing is something that um, you can imagine in crypto, but it can also be thought about in other places, but also resource sharing, case like folding at home. That is a pretty popular Holding case. It, home, yeah. um, it is a situation where you have a central company or association, and this company is actually linking uh, the ones who need uh, processing power and the one who actually share processing power, right? Now, this company can be replaced with a totally decentralized sidechain. Yeah. That is actually now sharing the fees from the people who need processing power to the validators who actually are providing the processing power. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so that's... Yeah. These are just ideas. I mean, th these are things that we may just as individuals want to just see. Billion small. dollar industry every well, time. Well, I mean, I yeah, don't mean to be, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm obviously <laughs> not making a joke like that. I mean, I, know, I understand I because <laughs> even in my idea of a DEX, you're talking about this. The DEX requires maybe a little bit more, but it requires at least fundamentally the same exact things in this case that you're decentralized data service provider has. Um, but what I was going to state, whether it's the DAO, because that was that's kind of a Rob thing, if we want to state that, if the DEX is my kind of a thing and a decentralized service provider is kind of your thing, I'm not saying those are your things. I'm not saying that's my thing. Just to make it simple, that's just three simple ideas of providing services when there are so many, as I stated, that we debated about for hours um, that we can talk about that that really make changes and opportunities. We, we, even, we can even pronounce the magic word of 2024. <laughs> exactly. You know what it is, right? No, I don't know. What, what is it? It's AI. Yeah. Oh, 20, oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2024, yeah. it's AI. Yeah. So yeah. that's something else yeah. that can There's be something done. something else next yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. so this is something where um, you have to think it's when it gets more complex, right? The side chains allowing you to now offer different services, each on their own side chain. You can even think about a side chain that is leveraging the work of other side chains. And that's where we were thinking about AI and the yeah. limitations that we can see in the in the current iteration of AI. I mean, it just popped up at the level it is now. And we can see that the way they reach there is centralized companies with a lot of money that are unfortunately following a set of rules. We can see are limiting the capability of AI because it has to follow some public rules. And again, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but we can see <laughs> that. the politics uh, of it. <laughs> yeah, that this kind of technology is is probably going to benefit a lot from having decentralized databases where they could train your own AI and potentially, again, the same thing as I was talking earlier. So cloud computing, right? So some computing power for the AI to work. So of course, this decentralized computing power will most likely not being able to compete in speed compared to the centralized options. However, in terms of processing power, if you just need power to process your protein decoding or actually AI processing, you can definitely imagine some sidechain that would offer this service and connect your own AI to a decentralized storage and a decentralized processing so that you could have a very powerful but decentralized AI. Yeah, I think uh, I like those two examples. There was SETI at home and, and the folding project and, and people did it voluntarily because it was fun and they weren't using their computer, but I think that kind of died down. And then I saw a project on EOS 
called Boyd that was monetizing that. So you get coins for letting your computer do any of those projects. And they had a list of them. They categorized them nicely. But the funny part was, okay, you have Boyd coins and now what? With this, you're doing this in the native coin. So it's like EOS. Back then there's EOS and then you earn EOS by doing this. And in this context, on a side chain, the thing you're earning is Divi or the thing you're earning is whatever main chain this technology is connected to. That's the cool part. Like, you don't, there's not new, a new coin for this, but you earn something that you can be using somewhere else on a different side chain. All of a sudden, the thing you earn is actually usable somewhere else. And that's a huge difference. And I think those kind of programs for side chains is a great, great uh, use for them. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So those are all things, kind of some examples. Uh, when we say you can use a sidechain for anything, like if you can think of a smart contract that does something, that's what these sidechains can be doing, except there's more people involved with earning, supporting, building on it, all of those things. It's a better system. So that's where we are going. And as far as I know, we are unique in this in this pathway. Um, exactly. And that's one of the things I love about being on this project. Trustless. Yeah.